Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today we are continuing our 2023 external exams for Queensland by looking at general maths questions and we're now moving on to paper two and our first question is on the Hungarian algorithm which happens to be one of my personal favourite topics for unit four. Now before we get into it, we're going to um, talk about how you can engage further with McClatchy Maths. Firstly, you could consider liking and subscribing and hitting that notifications bell so you'll know when the next video is available. Why not also consider super like? You can find that in the little dot dot dots um, over near the um, liking and subscribing. Um, that's a way that you can give back a dollar or two to the channel to say thank you to us. And why not tell someone? You could tell us in the comments what you thought of the video. You could share this on your class OneNote or your class um, platform for where you put your resources. You could also, if you're a student, consider forwarding the video to a family member if you think they would be interested. And why not consider following us on social media? We're on Facebook and Instagram. All right, I'm sure you've heard enough of that. Let's get straight into question one. It's worth five marks. Now, just um, as a refresher, paper two is our complex familiar and complex unfamiliar parts of our paper. And I would say this is a familiar type of question. You should have done lots of work on Hungarian algorithms by now. A triathlon relay has three sections, swim, cycle, and run. And this matrix shows the average number of minutes for three different athletes, Jane, Knox, and Levi, to complete each of those sections or legs of the tri triathlon. We're gonna use a Hungarian algorithm to predict the minimum total relay time if assigning each athlete to, athlete to complete one section. Okay, so our very first step is to start with some row reduction. So we're gonna take um, the smallest number in each row away from, um, from each number in that row. Now there are different ways to go about this. Your teacher may have taught you to do column reduction first and the QCAA actually allowed for an alternative solution to be done on the paper. So if you started with column reduction, that is fine. And if you wanna see more information about how to start with that first, jump onto the QCAA's website and see their solution there. But we're gonna start with row reduction today. Okay, so I'm gonna redraw the matrix exactly as I see it up here, just without the numbers in it. And I'm gonna look in that first row and the number 40 is the smallest number in that row. So I'm gonna take 40 away from each of these numbers. 40 take away 40 gives me zero. 56 take away 40 gives me 16, and 66 take away 40 gives me 26. So I've completed the first row. I'm gonna jump down to this one now. 36 is the smallest number in this row for Knox. So 36 take away 36 is zero, 60 take away 36 is 24, and 72 take away 36 is also 36. Our final row, let's look for the smallest number, and it's also the um, one for Levi, and it's the swim again. It seems like everyone is a really fast swimmer. So 25, 25, take away 25 is zero. 48, take away 25 is 23. 78, take away 25 is 53. We've done our row reduction and we get our first of five marks for correctly reducing each row. The next thing I need to do is to cover my zeros and work out how many covers I've got. Ideally what we want to get to, because we've got three allocations to make, we've got three athletes and we need to allocate three sports. So we need to have three covers for the zeros in the minimum number of covers. So here my minimum number of covers will be, that could cover those ones is this column here. So I'm not done. That means I need to move on to my column reduction. So what we're going to do for our column reduction is we don't need to do anything with this one here because everything is all equal to one another. It's already zero, so we can ignore that column. We're just going to reduce these two columns here and we're going to find the smallest number in each column. So the smallest number in this column is 16. So I'm going to take 16 away from 16 and I'm going to get zero. Okay, we do the same here, 24 take away 16, I get eight. 23 take away 16, I get seven. Let's move on to this one, the run leg. The smallest number there is 26. So 26 take away 26 gives me zero. 36 take away 26 gives me 10 and 53 take away 26 gives me 27. I've done my column reduction now and I get my second mark. Okay, so now I need to cover my zeros again and the smallest number of covers I can do is two. It's still not the same. I need three all together. So I've got to continue with the Hungarian algorithm. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do for the Hungarian algorithm is I'm going to identify my smallest uncovered number, so that's seven. And then I'm going to subtract all of these numbers here by seven, and then this double cross number here, I add back seven. So the way I remember that is that that looks like a plus, 
plus that number back in there, take it away from here. Okay, let's do that. So first of all, eight take away seven gives me one. Seven take away seven gives me zero. 10 take away seven gives me three. 27 take away seven gives me 20. And then I'm gonna add back the seven there. And now I need to do my covers again. I've got this extra zero in there. So I'm gonna cover that up. I could cover it that way, I could cover it that way. It doesn't really matter as long as it's not diagonal. Now I've got three covers and three allocations. That's a match. So now I am ready. Um, and because I've done all the algorithm steps and I've done the right number of covers, I get my third mark, but I'm now ready to start making some decisions. Who is gonna do what leg? That's the first thing I need to work out. Allocate different sports by looking here at the zeros. Now, if I look at the zeros, I can see Jane has two sports to choose from. Levi has two short sports to choose from, but Knox can only do the swim. So because Knox doesn't have multiple choices, Knox just gets that one sport, Knox is going swimming. That means Levi can no longer do the swim, has to do the cycle. And if I've eliminated the cycle and I've eliminated the swim, that means the run must go to Jane. So now I've got those. Now I could draw a bit of bipartite graph to represent these allocations. It wasn't necessarily required as part of the solution because we're just trying to work out that minimum total relay time. So that's what we're doing. Now we got our next mark here for assigning those athletes, but this is what we want to focus on. So I've popped the times in here. So we've got um, basically Knox doing the swim first, and then after he finishes the swim, because it's a relay, the next person um, is gonna start with the cycling, that's Levi, and then as soon as Levi finishes his cycle, Jane's gonna jump in and start running. So I'm gonna add those three together. Once I add those three together, I'm gonna get 150 minutes, change that into hours. We know there's 60 minutes in an hour, two hours makes 120 minutes, and 30 minutes more makes two and a half hours. And I get my final mark there for predicting the minimum total relay time including hours and minutes, okay? So you've got to use those units. Well, don't forget that there are ways that you can engage with us here at McClatchy Mass. Go and hit that like and subscribe button before you exit. Why not consider that super like and why not tell us in the comments if you enjoyed the video today. If you've got any questions whatsoever, McClatchy Mass is at yahoo.com is the place to reach me and I'd love to hear from you there. Don't forget to jump onto our partner's website, exam-insights.com. This is your one-stop shop for all of the 2023 and previous year's exams and exam solutions. It's a wonderful free resource for students and teachers. Well, thank you so much for watching McClutchy Mass. I'm Natalie McClutchy. Have a fantastic day.